What's up, world? It's action. Fredo it's your here, higher faculty. Oh. Hey, I thought you was going to let me get a piece. It's your boy, LC. You heard. Go ahead. Hey, we sitting here with a special guest, Chi-Town Mike, Mike Daly. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, Mike? Let the world know who you are. For those who don't know, and I will say this, I, I, this, I'm more excited about this than anything we've ever done because when we first started our reaction channel, the first thing I would say when we pause is like, man, who made the beat? Like, I don't know what they saying, but who made the beat? We finally got somebody <laughs> on here who made the beat. So let them know who you are, man. Yeah. Uh, thank you guys for having me. Uh, my name is Mike Daly from Chicago. Been in L.A. like 15 or 16 years now. Um, so been a long time. Um, but, yeah, I'm a music producer. I've had, like, the kind of longest road ever to get here and have kind of done every little odd job in the industry. Um kind of getting to this spot and then yeah now i'm having fun producing a lot of k-pop stuff uh done some chris brown stuff always trying to get more with chris um but yeah that's basically uh a little rundown cool yeah man i don't have to tell the audience how lit this dude is his resume speaks for himself right, right. it's like straight kids easy mm-hmm. uh you know Wavy, Bad mm-hmm. Alive. Yep, Kai Reason. I mean, the, the list goes on and on, bro. Yeah. And I didn't know that you had that many hits until, like, we sat down and was like, okay, wait a second. That's a hit to us. Like, he was on that, too? Yeah. Like, dang. I love that. Yeah, I've done a bunch of I've done a bunch of K-pop stuff, so um, it's kind of crazy to look back. But, um, but yeah, I've done a, done a lot of... A lot of joints that got music videos and stuff, so that's always like super fun as a music producer. Cool man, man. that's crazy. We got to take it back, man. We we need to look, know the journey of mm-hmm. Mike Daly. Who is Mike? How was it back in high school up until you became a superstar producer, man? Who was Mike in high school? Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, I definitely wasn't really like I wasn't in the band or any kind of music related stuff. I feel like I was like more trying to be with the cool kids and like play sports. And until a little bit later, then I actually got kind of like on the business side first. I think when I was like a senior, I rented a studio with one of my best friends and we like signed the artists from out there and we're like putting them in the studio and kind of funding this project um nobody knew what what like we had no idea what we were doing uh the studio is pretty janky but um but it was actually some of the most fun i ever had in the music game and kind of what like kick-started me into music um so yeah high school was a lot of fun um i went to a school like in the city in chicago uh, grew up in the city in Chicago too, so definitely like a little city slicker. Um, but yeah, for college, I went to University of Arizona, which is like a big party school. Had like way too much fun there. Uh, after two years, I like had to leave. Um, and then I went back home to Chicago for a couple months. And the whole time, uh, every summer, I was like, my dad's a stockbroker, so I would get little like kind of odd jobs in the stock uh, market industry, um, working at like the Board of Trade or the Merck, um, doing like little kind of like uh, runner type of stuff or trade checking, kind of bottom bottom of the line like summer work, but um, but always had fun doing that. Um, so I started doing that for a while after college or after two years. Um, but yeah, that you had to, I had to get up at like five in the morning every day. It was like, it was not great. All my friends are at college. So yeah, it was definitely a difficult time. So I kept looking to move to LA or, um, Florida. There were two music schools that kind of helped you get your foot in the door, like taught you how to be an engineer and kind of the basics of music production and stuff. Um, the one in Florida full sale was like, I think it was like a two year type of thing and it was pretty expensive. Um, and LA had a, like a nine month program that was way cheaper and guaranteed you an internship um, when you graduated. Yeah. So fast forward a couple months, I moved to LA 
didn't know anybody really um i was dating a girl that was out here so like it was kind of like that was the only person i knew i was going to school a lot it was it was a really um what's the word there were like a ton of hours every day pretty short concise program Mm -hmm. um but yeah so at the end of that um i got my first interview and like did really bad i'd never had an interview before uh didn't get a call back but kind of like was like okay this is what the interview process is like um my second interview was with the underdogs who are a huge production team in la and I got that interview. I was like wearing a tie and a button down, like all this stuff. And I walked in, they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, it's not, it's not <laughs> yeah. that. Like, yeah. I took my tie off and all this stuff. <laughs> um, but yeah, so they hired me kind of on the spot. Like, all right, train today and then tomorrow will be your first day kind of vibe. Um, and that just started going really well. Like, because of the kind of runner type of stuff I had done in the summers prior, Like, I understood all that, like, how to get people their food, how to clean up, just, like, you know, all that little stuff that I feel like um, some people kind of overlook all that stuff. And if, like, that's your job, like, you have to, like, be good at that. Like, you can't have people calling you, like, hey, can you please clean the room? Hey, can you do all this? So, basically, I, like, was really good at that stuff, kind of taking care of people and cleaning. Um, So, I got, like, kind of got everyone's attention there. As, like, when I was there, stuff was going smooth. Um, Not, like, maybe a couple months into that, I kind of got hired, like, full-time to be, like, the head intern and, like, teach, hire new interns and kind of teach them how to do stuff. Um, So it kind of, like, gave me a little bit of an edge. I was still giving people food and cleaning bathrooms and all that stuff, but I was kind of, like, the head person doing that. Um... And then, yeah, kind of slowly just kept kept getting little raises and little promotions. Eventually, I was like studio manager, so wasn't having to, having to go get people food. I was kind of like organizing all that type of stuff, scheduling sessions, doing whatever, really. Um, and then, yeah, with that, like, came, you know, engineer not showing up a day. So I, I'm engineering that day because I also knew how to do that. Mm-hmm a mixer needed an assistant i'm his assistant that day so kind of like ev- anyone that needed help that day if uh one of the underdogs had like a personal thing like at their house or whatever like those were kind of the jobs i was taking care of um while like learning all this stuff every day from the be- like some of the best people in the world like the people that were at the bottom of the underdog like roster then were like frank ocean Bruno Mars, James Fauntleroy, like these were like the guys that were well, like kind of on the come up, but not yeah. who they are today at all. Like I kind of met them when they were new to the whole situation, kind of. Um, so kind of to see their success was always like an inspiring thing, and still is. It's like, man, these guys were like I remember their first couple of days in the studio. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so fast forward, I always wanted to be a producer, but basically when I heard everyone's beats, I was like, oh, I can't even play them, my beats. It's so like embarrassing. My beats are so bad compared to this. Yeah. So I didn't play anyone's beats for like four years. For Wait, four years. Let me I was ask like, you, when did you yeah. start making beats? I started making beats like a, a little bit. Like, I was making beats on, like, Fruity Loops on, like, a bootleg program that you couldn't even save the beat. Mm -hmm. Maybe, like, the first time, like, in my freshman year at college. So probably freshman, sophomore year. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't even, like, I couldn't even, like, bounce them down and listen to them. Like, I was kind of just, like, messing around and and trying stuff out. And then I'd, like, delete it all and start another one because you couldn't really save it. But I guess right when I got to L.A., which was 2007, um, I was making beats, but I quit a ton of times um, in the in those four years to kind of, I was like trying to manage some people, found other producers and writers that were like way better than me and was bringing them to the underdogs, like kind of just trying to, you know, finesse something in the industry any way I could. So yeah, there were a ton of times where I just stopped making beats or didn't make beats for like months on end. 
um, in between that. Yeah. In between those four years. Give me a time where um, the first time you kind of came out of your shell and, you know, gave somebody a beat or played a beat and somebody went crazy. <laughs> yeah. So I honestly didn't even come out of my shell. They kind of like forced it out of me. Um some of the writers up there outside of those guys I mentioned earlier, there was a ton of writers kind of coming in and out to work with the underdogs. Um, so some of those guys that I would engineer for were kind of like, we know you like make beats or something. We know you're not like kind of up here just like taking, like being the studio manager and all that. So basically I started putting a couple of my tracks in like the folders that the underdogs would leave and sometimes they'd leave early the both of them had families and stuff so we were there super late they'd be like all right these are kind of the vibes for today play them for the writers when they get here so i think one of these days i put some tracks in there they started writing to it asked me if i made it and i was like i did make this they were like oh they got excited they started writing to it and the next day they played it for the underdogs and the underdogs loved it and they're like who did this and they're like mike and they're like no like who produced it <laughs> they're like no Mike, like mike daly did this one and i think everyone was like what um and that was like my first placement that song ended up being free run on chris brown's album And after that being my first placement, that kind of opened the whole door. Like, I went from having no pl no cuts as a producer, wasn't even looked at as a producer, to like when this album came out. Like, I'm a producer, and I have a cut on Chris Brown's album, and I have a studio I work at every day. So like, come to the studio and like let's work. So it sw it totally switched for me. Like kind of like really quick. Yeah. Mm. That's dope, man. I think it's just a result of all the years of, you know, grinding. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot packed in there, man. The fact that you, you know, openly admit that you were kind of intimidated by other people's beats and not really putting yourself out there. But at the same time, I feel like you always had that vision and that belief in yourself that one day you would get there. And that's just a real good key component of what you need to succeed, man. So that's yeah. dope. Definitely. Absolutely. Definitely. So how did you transition from a guy who got his first placement into um, pretty much working and functioning in the industry? I think um, a lot of it is just like um, how like hard you're how hard you're working and how hard you want it. Um, I still to this day like know all these producers that are like way more talented than me and and that I kind of met on the come up but um haven't had that much success because of the you know kind of the way they the way they kind of package the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Um so yeah, for me it was just kind of I always felt super lucky to be working with the songwriters I was working with because they were like, especially in the beginning, were like levels above me in talent. They all like messed with me because they had seen me kind of grind and and come up. And I think that helped a lot too. People were excited to kind of, oh, I remember like he used to get us food or he used to clean the studios. Like that's dope. He's, we're like, we're working with him now. So that definitely helped. Um, but yeah, I think, um, yeah, just kind of wanting it and being appreciative of, of like the people I was working with. So I felt like every song I had, like I had to like give like 120% to like, so they wanted to keep working with me and keep writing to my, keep writing to my music. So I still feel like that though. I still am like very, uh, like I'm, I never send anything like this is the hardest shit ever. I'm very like, yo, what do you, what do you think of this? Like, mm -hmm. like, like, I don't know. It's uh yeah, I'm still like not all that confident like a lot of other people are. I think maybe just from the way I've like kind of come up from the bottom. Mm -hmm. But uh, but yeah, it's it's an interesting head case thing. I don't know like it makes There's sense, though. We understand. We're creators, yeah. too. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Sure. Yeah. It's just crazy to hear you say that because that's just confirmation for us. Like, when we feel that way, like, man, just keep going. Like, Yeah, for sure. Keep going is, like, the main 
like thing in my head there's so many interviews where that's like the thing that stuck out for me Mm -hmm. it's crazy to hear you say that man like you know with the confidence and everything because just from a sound perspective alone i'm like yo this dude is crazy like he was going through your entire catalog before we started this interview and i'm like he did that too Mm -hmm. and i was like man "Man." i appreciate that (laughs) yeah that's pretty it's funny it's like i'm before all those tracks i was probably at some point like so in doubt of that track at some point too some point it like clicked and i'm like okay this is probably gonna turn into something yeah but yeah it's like it's always something you kind of got to push through yeah yeah that's crazy that's crazy talk about the k-pop industry how did you get involved you know you went from chicago to la and then you somehow managed to end up in korea man Right. So I feel like I kind of ended up in Korea, like on accident a little bit. Like I was brought as a producer, but I also like kind of was studio man. Like I was also like an extra person out there to help facilitate whatever needed to be out there. Um, But basically K-pop SM in general uh, really loves like R and B music. Um, so the underdogs are some of the biggest R&B producers um, of all time. They have like, especially for the music that, that Koreans like, they have some of the like classics that they like. So they had been trying to get Harvey and Damon out to Korea for a little while, I believe. Um, but basically, Harvey went out there, Damon was staying back. And Harvey brought me as a producer, to, like to kind of co-produce, because that's what I was doing in the states. Like I'd start an idea, and if it was good enough, like we'd write to it, and if it was good enough, I'd play it for them, the underdogs, and they'd kind of like take it from fifty to a hundred. Um, so that's kind of what the process was. So he was like, "We're gonna go to Korea, and same type of thing, like start some beats, and we'll all like finish them up, whatever." whatever the kind of process was. So, yeah, so he took me out there, and we really had no idea. I think there was maybe a group of five or six of us, um, another, like, producer, engineer, and then I think either three or four writers. And, yeah, we really had no idea what we were getting into other than we knew they liked R&B music, and we were bringing, like, some some really great R&B writers and producers. Um so we got out there and we had like a really successful trip the first trip uh, i think the first song i worked on was like this song called mr mr by girls generation mm-hmm. which ended up being a single and all this stuff happened with it like we were so new to it it was like number one on all these charts and they called it like a all kill or a kill all or some all this like new terminology and all these kind of numbers that we were like wow like it sold that much like that's crazy so everything was really new to us and yeah we got that first trip with with the underdogs was like really successful so we started going twice a year and then um my situation with the underdogs expired and i had been out to korea a bunch of times and kind of uh met like a lot of the people at the label you know kind of the whole the whole situation i'd been out there maybe six or eight times with the underdog so i'd made like some cool friends with all the people in the company and all that so yeah once i got out of my situation those were some of the first people i reached out to like hey can i like submit some music um and they ended up flying me out there it was pretty quick i think they were like you come out here like next thursday or something Mm -hmm. And I was like, yeah, for sure. Um, So I went out there and that trip was pretty successful. We got like, um, I think we were working on Shiny. We did like a a Shiny single there. Um, And that's what they needed. I think they were having a camp um, probably like Monday through Wednesday trying to get this single. They weren't getting it. And they flew me out like Thursday and then we got it. So little stuff like that like coming coming through when like they need something there's like a really you know that's like a really good play like that's something people remember and then that kind of got the ball rolling for me to start having my own camps and then yeah now that's what it is like it started out with me bringing one writer we did boss that camp that was really successful the next camp 
uh was like two writers then three writers four and i think that's where it's at now i think it's like four or five writers coming out there with me me and uh i've got a producer i work with on everything mitch um who's from chicago he's lives in chicago but yeah it's usually us two and like four writers and that's kind of um how it works now man that's that's, that's a that's a dope uh experience right there that's a dope story man um so i got i got a question while we're on the korean topic um what's the work pace like like can you paint a picture for like the work environment we just land in korea we pull up to the studio like what yeah paint the picture for yeah, so i feel kind of bad actually there's times for other people to party i'm like pretty militant and i'm like feel like I'm like the dad of the situation. Like, I'm like, we need to deliver like singles. Like we have to like, like we have to deliver the best records we can. Like we're out here. There's a ton of competition and every year more and more people are doing this K-pop stuff. So it doesn't get like easier. Just it gets harder every year. But basically we fly out, we, we go for a week. So there's kind of two traveling days. So we land on a Sunday. We usually kind of check into the hotel, not going to work on Sunday, check in the hotel, get some dinner and try to get everyone to like maybe get a drink or something and then get some get some rest because tomorrow is like the first day of the camp. And then basically Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday are like noon to midnight in the studio, at least for my camps. Mm -hmm. Like I think a lot of other people like take more like like uh tourist like time and check stuff out but um i'm really like trying to give them maybe 15 songs in five days so mm. I usually have three rooms going and the fifth day isn't really a full day so we really kind of only have four days but yeah usually i have three rooms going writing to my beats a day um so it's intense for me i'm like making those beats for those three and then i'm mixing those three like that night but also making beats for the next day so i don't sleep a ton out there i sleep for like a week when i get home <laughs> but out there i'm like like sleeping like a couple hours a night waking up and trying to finish stuff but yeah i try to come prepared with like maybe five or ten beats um and like i'll send them over and try to kind of get like a little clearance on them and like okay we could get the first and maybe first half of the second day going smooth and that'll give me some time to work on some new stuff um but stuff changes so quickly and some stuff that they asked for on monday tuesday it might be a t completely different uh kind of topic or whatever so yeah it's um it's pretty intense but the writers can kind of get in and out. They don't have to spend so much time in the studio. Like I'm there. I'm usually like the first one there and the last one to leave. If not, it's usually like a writer that's like been there and gets it and is like kind of, you could tell who's been there and like who's working like as hard as me versus kind of who's been like, who hasn't been there and who's uh, like partying a little more. And for me, it's like, I'm not, I don't care as long as we get the song done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just like once we have the song done, cool. And then make sure like tomorrow you could come in time so we could get another song done. But, um, but yeah, there's definitely, you could tell like the kind of veteran writers where they're really late with me and I'm like closing up like, Oh, you, you're still here. Like, okay, cool. So yeah, they're putting in the time too. That's yeah. That's pretty dope, man. Have you, all right. So how did you meet some of the guys you work with? And uh, this is a two-part question. Have you worked with uh, Tay Jasper? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love Tay. And, uh, Tay is one of the K-pop goats, man. Yeah, and, and, and Adrian? Yeah, yeah. So Adrian usually comes on my trips. Adrian is, like, to me, probably the t like one of the top dogs, if not the top dog. He just understands K-pop more than a lot of people, and he can sing better and his music like he just he has like kind of checks off all the boxes where there's a lot of other people that are extremely talented incredible songwriters but there's so many little technical parts of the k-pop stuff 
that throws those people off sometimes. Yeah. And Aiden, he like kind of exceeds and or like pushes through in those spots. Mm -hmm. But yeah, those two guys together especially are like that's Great. Batman and Robin. That's LeBron yeah, and Wade yeah. right there. For sure. <laughs> hey, you might for be sure. Bosch as well. I don't know how. Yeah, yeah no. As, uh, if I can ever like get them, they're all also so busy. Like people know, right? Like all us producers are like trying to get you know them to write to our stuff. So there's always that kind of competitive. I try. I only reach out like when I got like when I know it's some. Like when I, it's something that sounds like a single because I know they don't have time for mm. like some like just to write because it's my track or something like that. Mm, yeah. But yeah, I love those guys. But almost everyone else I met through coming up under the underdogs, they had like, a, I don't know if you guys are familiar with them or not. Um, I was with them for so long, so I kind of always feel like people know who they are. But in LA, they were a pretty big staple. They had like two studios that, kind of all the who's who of at least like the R&B industry were uh, always working out of, especially the songwriters. Yeah. Um, so I met a ton of people through there. And then, yeah, a lot of them kind of gave me a shot from seeing me on the come up and stuff like that. And then, yeah, once, like I told you, I was working with some songwriters I really shouldn't have been working with. But then once I had like, you know, a bunch of demos with these top songwriters, it was like, easier for other songwriters to want to work with me because mm -hmm. they're like oh these guys are working with you like must be all good yeah i mean um, everything happens yeah. for a reason man don't say you weren't supposed to be there man it right was, it was it was divine plan bro it was divine uh go ahead yeah. oh. oh no um one thing we wanted to do since we're on the the part of the interview traditionally talking about k-pop is man you have so many hits and it was funny because w before you called we were sitting here like all right you pick a song and i'm gonna pick <laughs> a song for him to talk about and we literally were like playing roulette like no i want to do that one i want to do that one <laughs> so we well, just for our k-pop fans because that's the majority of our audience uh mine because i've actually met some subscribers in person and i saw who lit them up the most like i'm like oh i know nct i know xo but when i said yeah. stray kids they're like, oh, my God, Stray Kids, like Stray Kids. Can you tell us about Stray Kids Easy, that experience? Making yep. that song, being – you were with them, right? Yes. So, hold on. Ooh. I just got, like, a 10-minute thing. I might have to, like, call you guys back. In oh, that's 10 cool. Yeah, go ahead. But, but, um, but, yeah, so first off, Stray Kids, like, the, their fandom – was insane like i posted something off i've like randomly will post when i have a song out on socials but the easy like i had to like turn notifications off on my phone because it was like Dang. unbelievable yeah. um their fans are are amazing i'm like i'm obsessed with them but yeah so easy um sm actually set easy up for like set that up so it's funny because they're on JYP, so I guess a competitive label. But um, yeah, the Echo, who I was signed to at the time, which is they kind of work with SM, they set that whole thing up for me, which was incredible. Um, but yeah, they were in town. I had a couple of my buddy, like two of my best friend writers with me. And yeah, we all like just kind of vibed out. And it was crazy because they wrote their verses so quick and got in the booth. And like their verses on that song are insane, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, like, and the way they like they could just rap so good, and their boy like mm -hmm. dude got the super deep voice, and like it's he just looks. like <laughs> we're like blown away, blown away by it. Um, but yeah, that was one of the most fun sessions because they were there with us. Um, a lot of the time, it's like us submitting music or only working with like one member or two members or something like that. Um, so yeah, that was a, a ton of fun for me. And still like, uh, I think that's probably the maybe the best beat I ever made. Like I get asked to kind of recreate that vibe a lot and fall short that of like recreating that. That is a very unique beat. Like I'm hearing it in my head right now, and I'm like, man, that one is like very unique to me. Yeah, I like I really think that was like a couple a couple things in that beat were like accidents that I don't know if anyone's a producer, they kind of know like sometimes something'll 
or stop or like loop the wrong way or whatever. And it's like, whoa, what was that? And a couple that happened a couple times in that track where yeah, just stuff kind of accidentally fit in place and it just kind of started getting better and better. Um, so I was excited to play that one and write like I like started kind of the basics of it beforehand um just to have something to play mm-hmm. um and they like right away like stood up and were kind of rapping and talking to each other and stuff mm-hmm. and uh yeah that was like it all happened pretty quick with that song um we did like two songs that day and that one was like all happened really quick after you heard the final mix were you like hey is this a hit is, did you think it was a hit <laughs> I did, and but I I didn't know like they were gonna do a music video or anything like that. I was just like, oh, this is like, this is gonna sound cool in stadiums and stuff like that. I think about that a lot when I'm making beats, especially like all the kind of NCT stuff I've done. A lot of that is like from the perspective of this is gonna sound crazy in a stadium. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that track was one that I was like. Uh, you never know it's like going to be a single or like they're going to really like it because they're also so dope. So they're making those type of tracks like <laughs> yeah. all the time. I got like 10 of those that trip. So, yeah, yeah, I was really excited to hear it was like making the album. And then I think I only found out right before um, the video dropped that it was going to be like a single or whatever B-side single or whatever it was. Yeah. So did uh did Three Racha help you on the production side at all? Because I know they make their own beats, like you know. Uh, that one, not um. I actually, I think that they were like probably help me with some drum spacing stuff. Mm. Um, but that that skeleton was kind of there, and then they like wrote to it. So I basically had to beef the track up a little bit to kind of match their energy. Yeah. And, and um, yeah, I think uh, they, they kind of liked where it was at after that and decided to keep it. Um, I don't know what happened with the other one. The other one was like more of a pop record. And I think they kept that one, but it just hasn't come out. So that happens a lot as a producer too, where you might get paid and do paperwork for a song and then the album comes out and it's not on there. And then three albums later, it's on there. So mm. just kind of never know. Wow, it's pretty, pretty cool. Dope. Have you ever um, watched any reaction videos like of your songs to see people's I feedback? Think, yeah, but I didn't know about reaction videos until way late. So I, I'm trying to remember the first one. It might have been Easy because Easy was like I had the most kind of like mentions and replies. Like I'm telling you, like my my phone was like blowing up from twitter from the stray kids fans i was like blown away with kind of the support and how much people were like saying they liked it and it was it was crazy like i've gotten some some love from some of the other songs i've done but nothing really even close to that one um so i think yeah i think i was getting tagged in some reaction videos and then i went back and started like going through reaction videos of certain songs I had done, and it was like really fun. But I really only did it that one day, so yeah. I haven't. Uh, I I've got to check it out again because that like as a producer was like one of the best days ever. Like I was so happy after that. It was really cool to see people react like that. We'll send you our reaction if you haven't seen it because it. I mean, I it's, didn't see you guys. I, oh, saw you. I sent it. I sent it. That, that was, was like dope. one of our earlier videos too. That was really yeah, dope. Bro. Like I was, I was blown out of the water. Like, I was just like, "What in the heck is going on, man?" I didn't even know I could experience sound the way that you create sound. Like, oh, I don't man. think you. Like, I'm a huge. Yeah, sound that was. Like, I feel like that was like an outlier. Like that was like. Mm-hmm. It's hard to get. I don't know. I've tried to recreate that vibe mm-hmm. a couple times, and it's just like, let me try to do something else because that's yeah. like, just, I don't know. Yeah. It's like an accidental mistake that turned out really good. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. Even going through like your catalog, I got like a little, we got a little uh, running joke on our channel, like my top five, and it's like way more than five songs. <laughs> like I got a whole <laughs> playlist on Apple Music. But I was looking through it and I'm like, oh, I got like four or five songs in your catalog in there. Um, Baekhyun, Are You Riding? 
Like, oh, yeah, that's, like that's gosh. a smooth joint. I'm like, the bass line you, is so funky. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> You guys uh, ever interviewed Vito uh-huh. or talked to him? Vito wrote that one. I don't know who else he wrote that with, but I can you know he he wrote that and it's on the demo. But yeah, he crushed that one. That was like another. Yeah, I love that vibe. I love making those kind of beats. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was like, uh, I don't know. That was like a like one I was excited to play uh, people. Just because, I don't know, I didn't necessarily think it was going to be a single or maybe not even make a project, but it was just like, a, just a cool vibe. Yeah. I really like that track. Are yeah. you are you ever blown away by like the, the vocals that are laid over some of these tracks? For sure. Um, and the, the whole like process, like the videos. Oh, yeah. It's funny, like Reason, what, um, what Kai did with Reason, like oh, I was yeah. like, I was like, this is the coolest dude in the world. Like, who is this? <laughs> he is. Right. Like, I really, uh, I wasn't all that familiar with him as like a solo artist like that. Mm-hmm. And that was kind of right after Candy had come out, and I was blown away by how well Candy did. Oh, yeah. Dude. And, uh, at, like, that kind of just juxtaposed to Candy. I was like, whoa, who is this dude? Like, he, <laughs> like, like I really, uh, I'm a big fan of Kai. Mm, I'm a big fan of everyone, but it was just like, I really didn't expect that. Like that video, I was like, whoa, like this dude is cool as hell. Yeah, I I had the same vibes. He's like (laughs) one of my favorite people in K-pop too. I'm like, Mm -hmm. yo, he's just naturally soft. That mm -hmm song is like, (laughs) is a bang. He's got bangers. Man, Kai, it's something about his voice. Like, I think I forget what song it is, um, but his voice distinctively was the one that made me like angry. I didn't know Korean. Like, I wanted <laughs> yeah. to know what he was I saying. Feel you. I don't even know what the <laughs> is. Is that blue? Yeah. I yeah. Think that, so. yeah. Yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh, bro, Kai is that dude. Yeah. 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 I'm a fan. I'm a fan of all those guys. They're all like. Such good stars, like they're really they got it down. That's cool, man. That's you ever cool. get to spend time with like K-pop artists? Like, I spent some time, but mostly just like backstage kind of meets. Um, whenever uh, NCT's in town, I usually get to like meet, like go backstage and take a picture and get like some t-shirts or swag or whatever. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think who else I've got. I actually got to hang out with Boa for like a while when I was in Korea. She was just like, uh, like we we were working on her album and she was on the floor a lot, which was really cool. She's like the like queen of K-pop. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think who else. I really don't haven't gotten to hang out with. Stray Kids was really cool to do a session with. Um, I talked to Kuhn like a lot. Um, I think it's Kuhn or Kun. Yeah, I don't know. From, from yeah, Wavy, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and he like produces and stuff. So he, we, like, we like send stuff back to each other. I really want to like collab on something with him. He's like a really dope producer. Mm-hmm. Have you, uh, how well do you know Kenzie? I love Kenzie. Mm-hmm. Every, um, yeah, I, I know her pretty well. Every time I have a camp, she comes. She's like one of the writers that's involved, and that's like um, a big treat. She's like the best. So mm-hmm. um, it's uh, yeah, Kenzie is the like kind of the one I'm thinking about the, the the most on the way there to try to have something that she'll like that first day. So that is like um, yeah, if I can get Kenzie happy the first day um it's huge huge like kind of weight off my shoulders and then i'm able to kind of have a lot more fun but yeah it's um she's like one of the best ever so it's a lot of pressure to kind of get that like get get something that kind of inspires her and makes her want to go because she just she's not going to write to a song just to write to it right if you don't Mm -hmm. I don't have anything good. She might be like, okay, cool. Like, I'll see you later in the week type mm-hmm. of vibe. Um, so, yeah, she's amazing. And I've gotten to write work work with her a lot. Um, 
done some great stuff with her. But yeah, she's kind of, and I always like tell her too. I'm like, oh, so like relieved that you picked something. Yeah. Um, but yeah, she's incredible. Have you guys ever like spoken with her? Nah, man. No. So she's like notorious for not being on camera or like social media or anything. And she kind of is like a she is like a ghost. <laughs> yeah, man. So like one of my goals, lifelong goals, is to you know interview her. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. Infamous. I'll try to I'll try to see if I can make it happen. But I agree, it would. Uh, I don't. I have never seen her do any stuff like that before she's very behind the scenes but yeah all over all the credits oh so. yeah mm -hmm. oh yeah for sure for sure yeah, yeah she's uh she's amazing so like we have a great her and adrian get along really well her and Vito. um it's just like a really good crew and i think they all push each other and like we get like that's why we have, you know, all the songs you guys are talking about. The tracks are all great, but like the top line of those is like A plus on almost all, like, almost all of those. Yeah. Which uh, you can't just get that from random people. Those are like the Kenzies and the Adrians and Chick Cole. There's all. There's kind of like a. I have like a list of like you know ten people that really could elevate your track to to a song. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of people making incredible tracks, like, you know, like tracks better than easy tracks, all that stuff. But they don't they can't maybe get it to the right person to write a song over it or track might not lend itself to a song. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of all the little stuff you got to think about. But, yeah, the songwriters are um, essential. I don't really have any placements with any necessarily new songwriters. A lot of them are kind of the the who's the k-pop songwriters got you mm -hmm. got you all right question so word of advice we want to give some value to the audience yeah. uh plus i'm sitting next to one of my favorite songwriters of all time even though you don't know oh, you, know. you gotta work on this stuff <laughs> yeah. i didn't realize uh, i gotta like research you guys a little bit more um, I mean, we don't got sick. too much outside of our YouTube channel, man. It's like been a crazy journal journey, man. Just right. to, a long story short, man. You know, we're from Ohio, and the industry is not really here. You know, as far as like the music industry, yeah. people working in 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 that nature. But I opened the studio. Well, we opened studio about two years ago for people to come in, artists, um, you know, producers, producers, yeah. um, just a content creator hub. You know where people can come create content, and uh, none of that really happened because <laughs> COVID. You know. <laughs> oh man! So uh, I messed everything. No, nah, so what did happen was me and him started sitting down talking about music like we always do, and we put it on camera as a reaction video. Stumbled upon K-pop, and like we went from just talking about k-pop songs and music in general to now interviewing you know guys like you that are working in the industry mm -hmm. i love uh, it that's um, awesome but you know lc is a dope song he, he'll never yeah. say that but you know he's, he's a dope song yeah i, yeah, I kind of yeah, think like you bro but i tell you what you give me a chance you might be surprised bro i have i have the gift i've always had the gift and i think it's just time to use it you know what i'm saying but i will say this i've even went through some kind of you know selfish eras like my dad has been telling me for years like you need to write songs and just sell them or you know get them to these artists and i'm like man i i need to do it and it yeah. wasn't until i heard like k-pop it was the first time in my life i was like oh i will give a, a piece of my heart which is my writing to an artist that's gonna sing like kai or <laughs> yeah. young i was like oh my gosh like these dudes are just coming straight from heaven you like, gotta knock yeah. one out. It's really cool when when it all just like unfolds and you can see the final product. It's like so much fun every single time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, for sure. And and even in my songwriting process, like I got tired of like looking for beats on YouTube's or some of the producers around here. It's like the same loops or whatever. So when yeah. I heard like some of the instrumentals you were making and other K-pop producers. It was perfect for me to be able to like blend those different genres and switch up like it really stretched my writing capability because I listen sure. to all kinds of different music. And, I, and I, that's a question I have for you, too, next. But I listen to all different types of music. So when it's all packed in there, 
I just, yeah. I look at other people who just listen to like this new rap or like something where it's just repetitive, and I'm like, that that don't got enough spice on it for me. Yeah, yeah, no, it's um, it's it's completely different than the music out here. I'm always kind of dumbing stuff down because there's so many sections I'm used to making in, yeah. in pop, and out here it's like when a, when a change comes, if I have like a B section in a track, people are like. Like what's going on? <laughs> just, just go straight. To <laughs> Whoops! <laughs> that's, that's crazy. Like, same as the works. I, I, yeah, okay, yeah, there you go. <laughs> I really think there's a market of people who are searching for that more musical aspect of like yeah. American hip hop and uh, R and B, but can't really find it. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why me and him took off so far with the reactions because we like are big music heads. And I've been looking for something like this, like mm-hmm. where, like the beat changes, like the old school references. Like I'm hearing that through K-pop because the first song we ever heard was like '90s Love." I don't know if you heard that track. Yeah, 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 I love that song. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm like, yo, I'm hearing Busta Rhymes references and stuff in there. I'm like, hold on, yeah. wait, 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 wait. I got to keep going, you know. So we yeah. kind of went down the rabbit hole. Another thing we say is like, imagine if Chris Brown. Trey songs, Drake, J. Cole, like how these Korean artists put like nine people on the track. Like I will probably explode. Like all my favorite <laughs> rappers, like just four bars of Cole. And then, you know, right. throw somebody else in. And it's just like, why aren't we doing that here? Like, yeah. what's going on? That's why we we also love the English versions of songs too. We got it. We got a. I don't know if I'm supposed to say this, but we got a little sample of one of these English version songs from oh, really? the producer. Yeah, yeah. He, he might have accidentally played it in the background while we were talking to him, <laughs> and we were like, "Bruh, how did you not put that out? Like, we want yeah. the English version." Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the demos, and especially like a lot of these, a lot of these guys that are like writing for for the K-pop stuff are like incredible. So yeah, the demos, the demos are crazy. <laughs> I man, I bet you your computer can set this whole thing on fire. Oh yeah, Probably, right? so much heat on that hard drive. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh. But I never got to finish the question I was trying to ask before I started giving you praise. I was like, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was just bad. like for writers and, and beat makers that like want to, you know, function and work in the industry. Like, what advice would you give for them? Like, a, a young Mike in Chicago. Yeah, I think um, the thing that I that always like sticks out that helped me in the beginning was working with people that are better than me. And I know that's always like that's like, well, how how do you do that? And how do you like? Why would anyone better than you necessarily want to work with you? But I think that is the quickest way. Um, like, I, for me, I would try to reach out. I think there's a lot of people that actually enjoy mentoring, and maybe not like. You know, you're not trying to be annoyed with it, but I, I don't know. I like whenever anyone DMs me, I like I f- I'm a, I feel appreciative and uh, yeah. and I always like give advice or whatever the question is. But yeah, I think maybe reaching out to some of your favorite, uh, like if if you want to get into K-pop, some of those writers we've been talking about, um, or. Like Genius has the credits done, like really, like the interface is really nice. Like I like kind of w- when I'm looking for K-pop credits, I'll go to Genius real quick and click around and then you can see what other songs these writers have written and all that. Um, so I think that's like a quick way to to check some of your favorite songs and get in touch with these writers. But yeah, I think... Um, it's kind of like anything else, like there are the kind of go-to people and to me the quickest way would be to try to get on one of their teams essentially because ever not like not everyone writes every song by themselves or produces everything by themselves so i'm always looking for people to you know send me little starts of tracks or ideas that i can you know flesh out it hasn't like really happened because i'm always so busy working on stuff but um i also haven't like put it out there like hey send me i'm looking for for people to to help me um but yeah i think reaching out to people that are already doing it and then trying to be of service somehow um is the quickest way to get them to kind of say yes to you it's is like hey i don't know what 
what you could offer but something like you know right. you do need any assistance in doing this can i help yeah. you put any like organize anything for you i'm trying to get in the game and um you could tell them i i told you to reach out like um yeah i think reaching out to people that are already doing it is better than reaching out like on the label side and trying to get a manager and send it through there like that stuff can really get tough and um like depressing when you're like sending stuff and not hearing back and all that type yeah. of stuff I feel like that that just you know you never know at that i think you're better off trying to reach out to a couple people in person and and don't be like you know if they don't answer right away don't get upset with them just like maybe un unsend it and send it again in a day or something like that like i've i've been there before trying to get people's attention through social media um and yeah sometimes you gotta like double text or triple text or whatever okay. try to get people's attention but yeah i think just getting someone that's already been there and then they can kind of help you out the quickest because they usually have access and that's really the key is like access to an A&R or mm -hmm. a label head or something like that to be able to send music and get it heard. Mm. Dope, dope. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, I got a question for you. So we kind of went through your, your life and your career and now it's kind of like a present day. What's mm -hmm. a day in the life of Mike Daly? You wake up, brush your teeth and then what we seeing yeah so it's funny i feel like i'm like a lot different than other music producers like i'm i have like my alarm set at like six in the morning i get up and i like day trade and i'm like on like i've got like cnbc on or msnbc and i'm kind of like trading for the first couple hours of the day and then i'll take a little break go for a walk and then kind of get to my music stuff. Um, but yeah, lately it's been a lot of, I'm either in the studio or like working from home depending on what my schedule is that day. So some days I'm in the studio like five days a week. Some days I'm in the studio like once a week or something like that. Um, but yeah, with COVID, uh, a lot of songwriters, learned how to record themselves and stuff so that's been great being able to send music uh just to like kind of my key songwriters and have them send something back without uh me having to like schedule a session to record it and everything mm -hmm. um so that's been probably the big difference since pre and post covid is being able to get songs done without like having to record them myself mm -hmm. uh, and then, yeah, there's, like, with the K-pop stuff, usually at the top of the month, I get, like, a brief of what uh, they're they're looking for from me. Um, so I'm kind of looking at that throughout the month and working on that. And then, yeah, stuff kind of, like, comes and goes, like, in terms of, uh, like, who needs music and who's reaching out to me for music and all that stuff. So it's kind of different month to month um what i'm working on outside of k-pop but the k-pop stuff is pretty consistent where i'm like in touch with them and submitting music or making edits to other songs like all of those songs that are out have like a ton of edits like they they have like the choreography team has a whole vision the music video team the a and r's the the head of the label so there's a ton of edits like once they like like a song and it's in the kind of process of, of being on the album um and that's a whole nother thing as a producer you have to learn how to do or know how to do is like they have some crazy edits sometimes i've put like two completely different songs together in in one song and use like like i don't know those songs are pretty complicated i don't know if you produce but maybe a regular song is like 30 tracks but a k-pop song could be like 200 tracks wow so like two of those together it's like 400 tracks in a song like it's like a Holy intense it's crazy yeah. but you know it's like there's 10 sections to it so mm -hmm. yeah um, yeah so yeah i guess that's kind of that's kind of it i'm married so my wife works on music um oh, cool. So, yeah, she's a, like an artist, singer, songwriter. So, um, yeah, we're usually like kind of both. She's usually like singing and recording, and I'm usually like in headphones or 
when she's not recording, got the speakers on. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, all kind of every day working on music and um, trying to get better at trading too. Mm-hmm. So like kind of my two things. Now, is there anything that you do to like spark creativity? Like if you're like, you feel like you're in a rut or you've like got a little bit of producer's block. <laughs> yeah, I hate to say it, but I will like have, I'll like crack open a drink or something if I'm like, sometimes yeah like sometimes you have to i have to like get to another level that i'm like not at necessarily right then mm-hmm. um, i don't like drink a ton of hard alcohol so like we have like a bunch of like little like seltzers or high noons all this stuff so i might crack one of those mm-hmm. um but yeah that's kind of um all i really need um to kind of get going someday if i don't feel like working or if stuff's not going well right away i can kind of like tell and feel it and i'll just like okay i don't i don't have it today um the longer it takes on stuff usually the worse it takes so if it doesn't kind of start clicking right away where everything is just like oh that sounds cool like let me try that if it's more of like nothing is sounding good then yeah those days usually aren't like i'll stop kind of stop working and try to do something else mm-hmm. uh, yeah. i don't like make five beats a day anymore or anything like that um i've been there and done you know kind of that uh part of the game but yeah right now it's like quant- what quality over quantity for mm-hmm. me right now yeah um, and yeah like i don't know it, like i just said it's k-pop kind of time out here so i've had like a couple different like LA K-pop camps and then just been working back and forth with people on some kind of my normal uh, K-pop stuff. Um, But yeah, that's, that's basically, basically it kind of the same, same type of vibe uh, every week, just, you know, schedule is a little different, but yeah, always kind of creating. That's That's dope. dope. I got one question. Um, How, could you explain to me your evolution of beat making from where you started to some advanced stuff you've learned now? Yeah, I think in the beginning, um, so I'm from Chicago. Um, so I was like heavily influenced by like Kanye West and Jay-Z was my favorite producer. So like all I really wanted to do in the beginning was like make a beat for Jay-Z. So all my beats in the beginning, um, like I've got like my record player still like right here. Um, I've got a ton of huge vinyl collection. I used to just buy a bunch of vinyl and try to find samples because I really didn't know how to play. Mm-hmm. Um, I still don't know how to play that well. Like I work with a lot of musicians, especially for a lot of the really musical parts of those songs. Like the the partner I was talking about, Mitch. Yeah. He's an incredible musician. So when it gets like really musical, a lot of that stuff is is Mitch taking over at that point. Um, but yeah, so in the beginning, I used to like make like kind of hip hop soul samples. And then I moved to L.A. and got with the underdogs and they were like, no, nah, we don't sample at all. And we make R&B music. So I started kind of trying to make like these Chris Brown type of beats. Um and I feel like I still, like, am in that, like, if I just make a beat randomly, if it's, like, not for anyone, it's going to end up, like, on some kind of R&B-ish, Chris Brown, Drake type of vibe. Like, that's just kind of naturally, I guess, where I where I go. Um, but, yeah, I guess as, it, as it's gone on, um, I've kind of figured out, like, this K-pop formula, um which has helped and i guess like to the most simple way i could put it is like out here the beats are like usually like an intro which sounds pretty much like the verse maybe like some stuff filtered out the verse maybe a little like filtered out part and then like the hook is basically the verse with maybe like a couple more things added to it um the k-pop stuff is like an intro a whole real like a real intro the verse is split to me into like two parts there's like that verse a and verse b so there's got to be a switch up there kind of like an easy like the, the beat switches up even though it's still the same verse right there 
Then B section has a switch up. And to me, kind of the traditional K pop stuff um, is going to be like an R and B B section, like some soulful or neo soul R and B chords. Uh, and like kind of like giving it a break to build up into like a big performance hook which sometimes is not the exact same as the verse sometimes it can be like a beefed up version of that um and then usually there's like a second half of the hook with another change up um and then maybe a tag after that and then what well, that's like five six kind of switches and we're in the first half of the song still mm -hmm. so like in the states you fly first first verse hook second verse hook kind of same thing for me i'm changing the second verse a little bit i need like to me there has to be some kind of difference or a moment or something where i'm not flying the beat where it's just the exact same as what the first verse was same thing ver verse split in two and then yeah fly everything and then the bridge is like a whole nother part and then there could be like a dance break after the bridge <laughs> but like just kind of there's so many sections and so many parts to the beat so kind of what i said earlier about the qu quality like i'll i'll spend a couple days getting like one song right and one one beat together and some like us producers might not they're like That's, why are you spending so long on one song but i'm like man it's like four or five parts to this song so mm -hmm. yeah and trying to make it all work um yeah, it's it's uh I think once you kind of study the formula and get the formula, oh we got like another ten minutes. Um then uh then yeah, then I'm kinda like starting beats and then using my formula like to finish the beats off. But yeah, I guess uh it's a lot more complicated now mm -hmm. uh, yeah. than originally, but um it's all for a reason, right? There's so many members, they have to have different parts, like there's like you know, it makes sense to me why there have to be so many parts to kind of keep everyone's attention and not have everyone doing the same thing. But in the, you know, in the States, we don't have groups with nine people and stuff. So, yeah, yeah it's we call it the dopamine overdose, especially <laughs> when we're watching a music video. Like, Man, you get lost. Like, what's yeah. going on? The videos yeah. are crazy. <laughs> like, it, it had me, like, scared to put a video out. <laughs> I'm like, I don't, really? I don't build it's changed me like being part of some like rollouts and big releases from like k-pop stuff and seeing the numbers and the views they get in the first hour mm -hmm. let alone like the first week verse like there's no one in the state unless you're working with like drake or taylor swift <laughs> or i don't know who else really is on that mm -hmm. k-pop level yeah. like not close like my buddy i don't act i don't want to get into like who's not close but oh. like yeah the the who's who of of the states besides kind of maybe the top five is like still like it's not even comparable mm -mm. yeah so it's, it's always weird it's like i'm so spoiled for that like seeing these crazy numbers on singles that come out then you'll have a someone you think might be a bigger artist in the states put out a song and it's doing like 10 percent of yeah. what what these groups are doing so yeah it's it's kind of crazy um it's definitely like changed my perspective mm -hmm. of of people releasing music mm -hmm. it's kind of like <laughs> i think american music just is going through a transition phase man we we i feel like we're the leaders but we're kind of like we kind of fell into like a one trick pony type thing man mm -hmm. it's time to revamp yeah it's a weird it's a weird time it's been like some weird music like i mean the music's great and everything but i definitely like think there's gonna be a new breakout artist soon or s something there's it's almost like priming up for like mm -hmm. some, something to change so yeah I'm excited for whatever that'll be my prediction is the K-pop style is going to come to America because I feel like the influence started in America and I mm -hmm. feel like it's kind of like taking a trip around and back. I think it started all the way back from like Motown, like mm -hmm. <laughs> and that sound. And then, you know, it transitioned to foreign music and them liking that sound and then combining oh. stuff. And then 
now it's time for us to start switching the beat up and artists collaborating yeah. with each other. So. Yeah, I could see it. I just, uh, I hope, I hope, uh, <laughs> I hope that's what they want. Yeah, I love it. Like, Hip Boy has been switching beats up for a minute. Like, yeah, I, I love it as a producer when people. But I get it. Like, sometimes it's too much. Like, people kind of want like some little simple yeah. TikTok like you know thing. Um, uh. And and sometimes producers can go on like do too much, and then you're almost doing it for the producer community, like adding all this crazy stuff to your beat. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but yeah, when, when you do beat switches like tastefully, like it's I love it. Even though it kind of got I don't know it, it got a little played out. I guess I feel like I, like like Travis after like they did it, everyone started trying to do it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, but not like in the K-pop sense, but, like in the rap sense. Yeah. I know exactly what you're saying. Do you listen to a lot of rap or what do you listen to like on a rap? Yeah, I listen to like mostly rap. I've been listening to rap like my whole life. So mostly mostly rap and then some R and B, whatever's whatever's new and then maybe some like old like I'm always listening to Chris. Um some old Trey Song stuff I still love. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I don't know, but yeah, mostly rap. Like I'm I usually am just like listening to rap. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I've been like all over the place, man. I've been listening to K pop, rap, R and B, old score R and B, and then I went through a little seventies phase <laughs> where I was exploring. I love that. Yeah, I love putting some records on too. Um but like if I'm like working out or in my car, I'm usually listening to some rap vibe. I don't know. Just yeah, mm-hmm my vibes yeah one of my questions i got two more questions one of my questions is how long can someone do what you're doing and like how far do you think you can go like do you think that one day you're going to be that old producer who's washed up or or do you feel like 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 you lose the juice (laughs) no hey like i'm like yeah but um yeah i'm very aware of like that I've had like a little run. So for me, I'm like, you know, like, like to double what I've done, which is what I'd like to do, like keep this going. But that's a lot. Like I've, I've had a lot of, a lot of songs come out. So mm-hmm. yeah, I'm definitely aware of that and always kind of thinking like trying to maybe find the next me or like the next kind of how the underdogs took me in. Um, and then kind of pass the torch. Like I'm, I'm kind of like thinking like that, but that's more recent. Um, there's there's so much like bad business in the music industry that I've never really wanted to do that. I've like everyone I work with and all my camps, like I don't take a percentage off people. A lot of people that have camps in Korea, if it's their camp, they automatically like take a percentage of every song or whatever. Like if I don't do the song, even though I do all the songs in my camp, but like, I don't know, I don't, I take like what's mine basically. So mm-hmm. it's weird for me. Like I just didn't necessarily want to get into that. Like necessarily having a ton of people signed to me or like a whole kind of camp under me. But the older I get and the more I'm like, okay, like how do I sustain this? And I see what other people are doing. Like the producers, I was kind of like in some kind of not competition, but I see that they're also getting the singles a lot of them are a little bit older than me and have like some producer signed to them or a team under them mm-hmm. and all that. So I'm kind of like, okay, so I guess that's the next step is me getting a little squad together and then kind of finishing stuff off and, you know, curating songs to submit. Um, but yeah, I'm not like there right now. I'm still like trying to, uh, trying to get singles, trying to produce. Mm-hmm. We gonna send you some fire, bro. I'm telling you, Middletown, <laughs> where we're from, we we breed the most rarest of talent that has not been exposed to the world. Like we, I believe you, it. Man. Come to Middletown. It's just a small little city, but we could go in somebody's basement, and you know, it might be a sh- couple shorts and the cords or whatever. You know, somebody. Are you guys in Ohio? Yeah, yeah, we're in Ohio. You guys know Aaron Ray? Uh uh-uh. uh I'm writing that down. Now, who is that? A R I N, I believe. Um. I don't know, R A Y. He's an R and B artist from Cincy. Hmm. Cincy's in Ohio, right? Yeah. We're like twenty five oh, yeah. minutes away. Yeah, I work there. Um he's cold. He's uh 
he's a beast but i just i just didn't know he's like uh he's in la and stuff but um another like buddy of mine that i've come up with but yeah check out his music for sure he's cold mm -hmm. i think he knows some k-pop stuff maybe nice I, i almost brought him out to korea one time but uh he ended up going on tour mm -hmm. but yeah super dope artist oh that's what's oh, up yeah we have to check him out yeah we definitely will but yeah man uh my last question, you know, someone of your stature and all of your accomplishments, you could easily, you know, feel complacent and feel like you've arrived. Like, do you still dream? And if so, like, what what is that dream? Yeah, I think I still, um, you know, I go back and forth on it. I was on a walk today and I was thinking about it, how like um, when I moved to L.A., I had this like I used to like go over these like Grammy speeches in my head and stuff. And like, Oh, when I get a Grammy and the older I've gotten, it's kind of like, not like I've given up on that dream, but it's just like, I don't, I don't think about a Grammy at all anymore. The older I've gotten, it's more like, um, kind of like, I don't know. I just not thinking about awards so much. It's just more like, um, trying to like get the next song is more so on my mind than trying to get an award or, or something for anything is, is really just trying to kind of stay relevant in the, in the music industry. And, um, yeah, not, not really have a drop off. That's kind of where I'm at now is like, um, just trying to like kind of maintain what I've done and hopefully build on it, but like at least kind of maintain, what, what i've been doing um but yeah it's it's definitely difficult there's more and more people doing k-pop uh so many more people than we're doing it like you know pre-pandemic and mm -hmm. even before then um it used to be hard to get people to write k-pop like mm -hmm. it really it really did like most of the writers i work with are working with the who's who of people out here mm -hmm. So yeah, five years ago when I was like, "Yo, can like can I get you for like an hour to do a K-pop song?" It was like I had to like, "All right, let's do this thing for Chris," and then like stay an extra hour. I need you to like write this song. And it was like people really weren't taking it seriously. But um, but yeah, over the years, people uh have taken it way more serious, and they see the kind of um yeah, they, I think they see all the momentum K-pop kind of has, and now a ton of people are doing it ton of publishers are submitting music um yeah it's uh it's yeah right now i just kind of want to build i guess on what i have and if not just kind of maintain and not drop off okay that's the uh, uh that's the lebron approach you know after you get the <laughs> ring i still i gotta get another one and then another one yeah. and then another one okay <laughs> yeah i don't really get like too high or too low i feel like i'm pretty like level but when a song comes out i kind of do start like itching to get another song in place to come out because yeah it's almost like the like clock starts when that song comes out and it's like cool and then it starts like yeah. it's like not nah, getting close to not being cool anymore yeah. so yeah um yeah just kind of putting shots up right just keep mm -hmm. keep my shooting yeah for Dope. sure Dope. I think that's all the questions I have, man. Yeah, it's all the questions I got. You got any questions for us? Uh, I don't know. I'm definitely down to work on some music, though. Yeah, uh, for sure. Yeah, man. But, um, how, does that, how does that process work? Uh, what type of stuff do you like working on? Like R&B stuff? Dude, I'm just going to – what I'm going to do, I'm just going to send you some tracks. Yeah, yeah. You just hear, like – I've been on this, like, lo-fi kick lately, real melodic stuff. But honestly, man, I'm so universal. Like, I listen to so many different types of music. Like, I was listening to rock and roll in the way here, Coldplay. Then I'll switch on to some rap and just listen to beats. So I'm, yeah. I'm pretty versatile. I don't really have a style too much. But, yeah, I mean. I'm just saying, I said I listen to rap all the time. But, like, I also listen to, like, Coldplay and Nirvana and the Chili Pepper. Yeah. 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 Yep. But, like, uh, yeah, like. It doesn't like if I'm trying to like get in a vibe, the rap shit's what I cut on. Oh yeah, yeah. That hits the spirit a little little differently. Yeah. But uh yeah, I've been making a lot of clean hip hop lately, like in in hopes of just figuring out what I'm gonna put out myself as an artist. 
um i had a bunch of music online like in college man i had a group and uh man we were just going ham making like weekly day almost daily songs just for our house party so like everybody would come to indiana state or you know i went to indiana state everybody would come to the football house to see what track we came up with for like that thirsty thursday and then we have a song for friday shout out to my guys too we were just going ham and then like i just had a change of heart you know grew up a little bit gave my life to the lord and was like man i really don't want that stuff on the internet i was talking crazy <laughs> it's still in me too but i'm just like you know just my own my kids to just you know pull it up on youtube one day like dang dad you was you know wilding so yeah. i took it all down and then i just kind of cleaned it up so pretty much clean hip-hop but like if it's an assignment my my brain can can be creatively like switched yeah. on to go there whatever. i could send you beats for your stuff but also yeah. i can like, give you some leads like this what i this the type of vibe i'm i'm looking for something like this if this is in your wheelhouse yeah and i can i can pretty much record myself decently enough to send yeah, it back to I, you yeah, so, yeah i just need the files and i'll yeah. make it sound oh bet we got work to do then man that's a blessing <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty dope. Uh, you guys having me, I always like, I'm always down to talk about music. I, and whenever anybody like hits me up in the DMs or whatever, I always like have nice conversations and stuff. But um, but yeah, I appreciate you guys asking me. I'm always, uh, always down and hopefully, uh, yeah, hopefully someone hears something that can help them. Oh, for sure, man. We're big on that, too. Education, and entertainment. And, and for those subscribers out there that are watching that ha uh, aspire to be a producer one day, like he threw so many nuggets in this interview, like yeah. mindset, work ethic, you know, literally just stepping outside of, you know, your traditional comfort zone and what you're supposed to be doing and just being putting in that grunt work, essentially, is what I'm trying to say. Like it has to be done and it's worth it. Great character, man. You're awesome, dude. Yeah. Oh, man. I appreciate you guys. You guys, too. Yeah, man. I appreciate your time, man. And, uh, you know, thank you. This has always been a blessing, man. Like, we're two dudes who sat down and started listening to music, man. And it's amazing to see that, you know, we're uh, interviewing people making the music now. And, you know, we still got a lot more work and things we'd like to accomplish. But, uh, you know, this is like a huge step for us and, you know, a big blessing. Mm hmm. That's um no i appreciate you guys again and then yeah if there's any like specific people you guys need to get in contact with or anything that it, like i don't know if i follow them or whatever it looks like i know them just let me know i'll definitely try to connect um connect you with whoever whoever i can but yeah i mean you guys doing this type of stuff like helps helps me as a producer too like you know what i mean like that you guys like doing like those reaction videos gets my name out there so i really appreciate that yeah my guy is working on a netflix film too he's a filmmaker and uh, yeah next time we we actually came out to la we did an interview with vaccine i don't know if you know who that is yeah, yeah. He, he's also a, like an artist right yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I, had, I, bought, I bought a piece of his oh, i was thinking <laughs> piece or something that was crazy yeah i fuck with him yeah that's crazy yeah so we were out there so next time we come to la man we want to definitely get some shots with you connect whatever but, definitely uh, yeah we're doing a documentary because we feel like people like you deserve the recognition you know just as much as these artists you know um, and a lot of kids that you know subscribe to us a lot of people you know I work at a middle school right now. Shout out to my girl, Sue. She was one of the Stray Kids <laughs> fans. She's going to go crazy. That'll shout her out on YouTube, too. But, like, I always ask them, like, you know who Mike Daly is? You know who Tay Jasper is? Like, they're like, who? Because they're so, like, <laughs> they're so in love with the artist. And I'm I'm trying to yeah. let them know, like, where it came from. You know For what I'm saying? For sure. That's important to me. Like, I... Sometimes, like, I just want you guys to, like, love the song. Like, I don't, you know, I remember a time where I had no idea who the producers and writers were. And it was almost like, it almost was, like, more fun a little bit mm -hmm. for, like, every song that came out. I'm like, damn, who wrote this? Yeah. But, uh, but no, I, I understand. I understand for sure. Yeah. But, uh, but, no, fans on either side are incredible. So we're lucky for them. Mm -hmm. For sure. That's dope. All right, man. We appreciate you, brother, man. We'll definitely be in touch. Yeah, okay, man. awesome. Take care. All right. Man.